Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals finally arrives on the Nintendo Switch and this, it's been a long awaited release for me and for many of you as well. The big question though however is, can it live up to the incredible first game and that is what I'm here to find out. My name's Alex, this is Switch Corner and if you do enjoy the video today, consider subscribing, it helps out the channel a huge amount. So we're going to be starting today then with the story but I do just want to add here, this will be spoiler free and while I will reference the first game at point this will not harm your experience with Eva. I will also then break down what experience, if any, is required from that first game. The story of Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals then puts you in the role of Riley, a mid-30s woman that has returned to her hometown of Kamina. She has taken on the role of investigating mysterious radio signals for some sort of unknown organisation. But of course what you find here is going to be more than you did bargain for. Basically all of these signals, they are doing everything from interfering with electrical equipment to impacting flight radar systems. You'll also then be working alongside a gent by the name of Jacob who was born and raised in town and yeah along the way of course expect a whole lot of supernatural on this adventure as you set out to set up four antenna rays that can help with the rifts that are occurring around this town so think these are portals to the paranormal. I enjoyed the story I wouldn't describe it as being quite as effective as the original game but personally I did prefer the characters here. The original is centered around teens that kind of found themselves in a dire situation. This one with the characters being in their 30s for me that felt more relatable. You know they have the problems of life on their shoulders as well as the current circumstances and for me it led to some really unique back and forth. If you are coming into Oxenfree on that note actually for the first time just a warning be prepared for near constant dialogue. It is a narrative adventure and that really is where the enjoyment is found. Gameplay then remains relatively similar to the original game. You can move with the left stick, choose dialogue responses with the Y, X and A buttons and then you can interact with the B button. Alongside this you can also use a radio receiver with a tap of the right trigger and change the channels with the right stick. For anyone that played the original this will feel instantly comfortable and I do think they've optimised the movement to feel a little tighter. Additionally, Riley moves a little faster though sprinting here remains automatic. When it comes to new mechanics then we now have a walkie talkie. This is attached to the left trigger. This allows us to connect with a variety of locals and we also get some additional equipment in the form of climbing rope. In the original we could do things such as climb smaller ledges. Now we have a little more flexibility if we can find a hook pre-planted in the grounds. Where this one is majorly different from the original game is just the size of the location. This is a much larger world than we saw before it and it gives you more freedom in exploration. In fact, the only real guidance given to us is these antennas must be planted above 3500 feet and look sure when you look at the map there are only four specific locations that they can go but how you get there will really be up to you. Now at first the location was a positive but by the end of the game that six hour runtime, it had honestly led to some frustration. The map first of all not the easiest to understand there's quite a bit of backtracking as well by the end game and a few of the areas are actually locked off initially which was frustrating because I had the choice of four antennas and I immediately chose the one which was being blocked by the game. Why not just tell me that and save me the hassle? Outside of this though, honestly the game provides the expected strong adventure experience and the story helped me overcome these minor issues. You know, the incredible dialogue system returns which allows you to choose freely or even opt for silence. You can even move while you're having these conversations so it never feels like it's interrupting the gameplay. Then we do get some minor puzzles as well. Some of these are radio based like the specific game, you know, tune it to a specific signal. But there are a few new additions as well, such as matching up shapes through a visual audio wave. And there's even some human enemies in here out to obstruct your progress, the cult known as parentage. On that note, yes, they are out to obstruct you, but much like the first game, there is no game over state in here. Rather, every interaction, every decision, it will impact the outcome and that's what really made the original so special and that feeling here returns. When it comes to issues then I did find this new map was quite a bit more difficult to read, a few of the interactables a little tough to connect with at times 
and I had an issue when the walkie talkie got stuck on screen for a few minutes, though it did disappear when I changed location, basically I had to hit a loading screen. To finish gameplay then, on a positive however, it seemed to run perfectly, I played it over two sittings and the frame rate felt stable throughout. Then the load screens, they were a problem in the first game and they've seen a dramatic improvement. Sure, they can still be a little on the long side at points, but they are less frequent. When it comes to Oxen Free 2 and experience with the first game, it's been advertised as a standalone adventure and that is very true. The story here could be enjoyed by anyone, but it will reveal some spoilers for that original adventure. So yeah, do watch out for that. Additionally, there's some little references in here that I really appreciated thanks to my time with that first game and it for sure elevated the experience. So if I had any recommendation, honestly, play the first game, then you will get the most out of Oxen Free 2. Visually then it's another winner, I did play at points in handheld and with this world now being quite a bit bigger you may face some issues with the camera pulling out a little too far making it a little bit more challenging to make some items out. I did have some issues myself with the map, it has these tiny yellow triangles to show exits and at times it took me a little while to kind of spot them. That said though the rest is mostly positive, the characters are once again 3D models, they are incredibly expressive whether it's reacting to the surroundings or the conversation paths. The environments are stunning, they look absolutely massive at times and there's so much variety packed in here. You know, this game, it's basically a case of they've dialed things up to 11, you know, it's a bigger location, but it's not repetitive. They've used it to add more variety and some of these set pieces really are stunning. As well, the first game just always looked good, especially the paranormal encounters and portals, but now again they've gone above and beyond, they've really mastered some of the flashbacks, the signal interruptions and just the, I guess, general weirdness. If I had any other minor issues, I'd say I noticed some minor pixelation throughout if I'm being picky and there is one official quirk that will need a minor patch which is occasionally when the dialogue by each character appears it's a little coloured bubble, it can come in slightly too big and then it resizes to fit the character and your eyes may catch it on occasion. Audio finally, and the first game, one of my favourite soundtracks out there, this one, maybe it's because it's new to me, it didn't quite feel as memorable I guess, but like the rest of the package, it had a whole lot to live up to and it's still pretty damn close at this point. It's once again packing a decent amount of environmental effects, but here they're really leaning more into the paranormal with digitised sounds, ominous tones, and once again a stunning soundtrack that matches the mood perfectly. You know, it's just when you compare it to the original or the opening of Oxen Free, it blasted the music for the first 15 minutes, that was incredible instantly a gaming memory for me and I didn't kind of find any of those moments in here I guess but it is still seriously impressive. Oxen Free 2 Last Signals does what I expected, it's the mechanics from the first game that we loved and they've gone ahead and expanded upon them. A new walkie talkie system, rope climbing mechanics, new puzzles, an expanded world and then of course a new cast that I particularly liked. However, not all of these are positive, namely the location. The scale is fine, but the new open exploration, it leads to a little too much backtracking. And there's a few design quirks here that didn't quite pay off. For example, the frustration of discovering I immediately went to the one locked off location. Just make us aware of that at the very beginning so we can bypass that frustration. With this out of the way, however, if you liked the original, you should absolutely play this game too, and my review of that, if you haven't seen it, it is in the pinned comment below, and it only went live just yesterday here on the channel. Today though, Oxen Free 2, Last Signals, it's getting a great 8 out of 10 from me, and I cannot wait to see where they go with this world next. Of course, I'd love another entry. I'd also love to see them maybe explore a few other genres. So with that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.